You are going to train your conscience that will affect your marriage. It's going to affect your health. It's going to affect the, your children. It's going to affect your finances. It's only those who are trained in the world, those who are rooted in the world, who are trained in the world, that can withstand the storms coming. There are storms coming. The word of God is superior to the economic indices. The Bible says, what can be seen is temporal. The things that you can see is temporal. Financial problem is temporal. Health problem is temporal. The things that you can see are temporal. But the things that cannot be seen, the invisible thing, that is the word of God. The word of God is spirit and life. It's invisible. If you don't learn how to listen to your inner man, every part of your life will be made a shipwreck of. Have you heard of Loki Christian Bookstores? Visit us at our head office. Suit A12 and 13, Ground Floor, Rochas Plaza by Tantalizers. Wusse Zone 3. Telephone 080-366-07897. 080-366-07897. When the medical practitioner says you can't get away, this sickness is going to kill you, the word of God is superior to it. The word of God is superior. The word of God says, by my stripes you are healed. That word is superior to anybody's opinion. Either the person is, in, is, a, is a human being or a demonic spirit. I don't care who that person is. I don't care what that person is, is your parent, your friend, your relations, your, your boss in the office, anywhere, no matter what anybody says, this word is superior. And so we are exalting this word this morning. We are exalted because the word, the word of God, God what has exalted his, his, his word, even above his name. The word of God is superior to anything, any thought that can come from the pit of hell. The word of God is superior to what you can see with your eyes. The word of God is superior to what you can feel in your body. The word is superior to it. And do you know what is it? The Bible says, what can be seen is temporal. The things that you can see is temporal. Financial problem is temporal. Health problem is temporal. The things that you can see are temporal. But the things that cannot be seen, the invisible thing, that is the word of God. The word of God is spirit and life. It's invisible. And through the world, the, the temporal things, the symptoms, and the, the non-nogging symptoms begin to change based on the unseen power of the word of God. And so as a church, what we do here as a church is that we preach the word. Just like God, just, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to, uh, to, uh, to, to Timothy, to Paul. He said, preach the word. He was charging Timothy, preach the word. In season and out of season, preach the word. Don't preach opinion. Don't preach diets. Don't preach uh, uh, human, human ideas. Don't preach human philosophy. Don't preach demonic doctrines. Preach the word. Don't even preach politics. Preach the word. We are here to preach the word. This morning and your lives will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise God. Clear conscience. Clear conscience. And you know, we, we, this is so vital to your life. It's so critical to where God is taking you to. That if you learn this one and patiently learn what I'm teaching you on and learn how to maintain a clear conscience, it's going to affect your lifespan. It's going to affect your finances. It's going to affect your health. It's going to affect your marriage if you are married. It's going to affect your relationship. It's going to affect every area of your life. When you know and learn how to maintain a clear conscience, it affects every area of your life. First, we get chapter 1, verse 19. You may not hear of it. Just talking about this conscience thing. You know, we read the Bible. Some of us have read the Bible and we see conscience, conscience. We just pass it. We just pass it. We don't even maintain What is conscience? Maintain clear conscience. What is conscience? What is conscience? Give me an energy of it. Look at it. Look at it. I want you to look at it. And I to read it with me. Want to go? Cling to your faith in Christ. Eh? Keep your conscience clear. Did you see that? Look at it. 
He said, he's giving you an assignment. You cling to your faith. Because in this end time, many people will be losing their faith. They will depart from the faith. And taking seducing spirit and doctrines of demons. But see, see, I destroy that. Cling to your faith in Christ. Look at it. Give me the, I'm, not, I'm not done yet. Clear your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. Look at it. Read, read on. For some people have deliberately violated their consciences. And what, what happened? As a result, their faith is what? Has been, made, been, been shipwrecked. Some have deliberately, but well, if you don't understand what is about conscience, you know not better than you. What is it? I don't know. That's why you need to learn it so that you don't fall to the, the, to the, to the designing men and the strictness of men and Satan. Some have deliberately violated their consciences and they made a shipwreck of their faith. Give me verse 20 of it. See an example in verse 20. Oh, that's the place. That's the last verse in that, in that last place. Give me verse 20 of that, of that place. Himanios and Alexander are two examples. I threw them out and handed them over to Satan so they might, they, 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 they might learn not to blaspheme God. Anybody's conscience can be violated if you are not, if you follow the you don't learn about it, you don't even know about conscience, you don't even know you have a conscience. You don't even aware that you have a conscience in the first place. You don't even know anything about it. You are just born again, that's what you don't need about questions. Okay? Anybody's conscience can be violated if they don't learn what you are learning now. If you don't learn it. That's why Acts, Acts, well, our, Acts 24, 24, 16, our, our scripture, goodness scripture of this, this series. See, look at what Paul said here in the book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 16. See, look at it, look at it, look at it. This be so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense towards God and man. This is Paul is saying he's struggling to have clear conscience. See where we just now say you need to cling to your faith. You see, Paul said, Paul said, is he maintains is striving, I mean, struggling and doing everything. Striving takes effort. I'm making deliberate effort to maintain clear conscience. A conscience void, that is devoid, that is, de that is devoid of offense towards God and man. So this thing I'm taking you is so important. And I, my belief is that you will not lose the significance of it in Jesus' name. Because it's only those who are trained in the world, those who are rooted in the world, who are trained in the world, that can withstand the storms coming. There are storms coming. Storms are coming. But it's only those of you that are strong and, and you, have, you have learned the world, you are doing the world, that can withstand any storm. You see what Jesus told the, told the, told the, told the, the disciples when he was talking about, about the people, two people building houses. He said one was building on the rock, the other was building on the sand. He said the one that was building on the rock was the one that had the word of God and obeyed the word of God. The other one had the word of God and didn't obey the word of God. He was building on the sand. The same storm came against the one on the rock. The same storm came against the one on, 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 the, on the sand. And then the one that was built on the sand completely wiped out. The one on the rock was standing. When all the, after the storm settled, that was standing. You are, uh, you are trying to build your life on the rock of the word of God. See, we as a, as a church, we don't build on that is nothing far than fashion. What is in vogue in churches? We are building on the word. So that when the enemy comes against your marriage, to destroy your marriage. When Satan said this, see, see, look, you don't know. See, if you are not yet married, you don't know the warfare involving marriage. Somebody is not married. Doesn't know. Asking anyone on on, uh, on uh, uh, what is it called? Preacher, marriage, marriage, marriage preacher, the counselor. Why are you doing marriage seminar? Well, I love you. You love me. We marry. What's the big deal about it? 
You just have sex and then you just have sex and then go on the moon and then that's it. That's it. So, uh, those all crazy ideas. Listen now, why is the church so important? The church is so important because the church is the way is where you are trained. It's where you are trained. If we are training you about your how to maintain a clear conscience, for instance, if you don't know how to maintain a clear conscience and you don't get the training, you will keep valuing your conscience and then you make a shipwreck of your life. Look at uh, Acts 23. Let me, let me show you something now. There, you see, the word conscience is used for different, there, there's evil conscience, there's weak conscience. There is a, a pure conscience. There is a, 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 a blameless conscience. Look at it. Acts 20, 23, 1. Then Paul looking at it at the council said, Men and brethren, I live in all good conscience. Look at it now. I live in all good conscience before, before God until this day. See, I, when I began this, this series, I told you, I said, I said, your, your, your spirit your, has a voice. Your, your, your mind has a voice. Your body has a voice. Listen, when you, when, what is the voice of your body? Your body is feelings. The voice of your, of your mind is the reasoning. You reason things out. You, are, you reason thinking, thinking things. And I say, your spirit has a voice. But if you don't know that your spirit has a voice, you are not even aware that your spirit has a voice. You don't even know. What don't know can kill you. You're not aware that your spirit, your spirit has a voice. And listen now, if you don't know your spirit has a voice, how can you hear God? You can't hear God. You see, do, listen now, I said it, I said most of the believers that go to many churches in Abuja, yeah, all over the world, most Christians, are, they are ruled by their senses. They are ruled by logic, reasoning, just the reason, just what to think is okay. Intellectual, they just they just stay within the realm of intellectual thoughts. I should do if I have design, maybe ah, this look like it look like it look like there's nothing about this about hearing the voice of God. That man who took a job and, and left town to another town and went and go, I, I didn't find a I went to the wrong church. And then the money was destroyed. Why was my destroyed? The money was destroyed because he was walking in the realm of the senses. If you are listening to, his, to his, the voice of his conscience, he would have said, no, don't take up that job. If anybody told that man that his money will be destroyed, his children will be estranged from him and everything, and he will go, he will go to another woman. You see, at the crease, I will try that kind of thing. How, I can't, I mean, no tender, no, 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 no. But you see, the thing is that anybody can backslide and be destroyed if you don't learn how to listen to your conscience. You see, what I discovered is that I, I, every day I discover that Christians, they underestimate Satan. You underestimate the guy seriously and he's finishing you like crazy. He doesn't even, he's not carrying acts to follow you. He's just thoughts. He's just feeling thoughts. And you carry his thoughts and he's missing. You are obeying him without even knowing it. Because you, there, there's no teaching. Look at it now. Look at that. Let's look at the first one. Look at the example of good conscience. Uh, Acts 23.1. Then look at first one, the other one. So what I'm going to say is this. When you see the word conscience, there, are, there is pure conscience, good conscience, weak conscience. Okay? You also have guilty conscience. Okay? When you feel condemned, you have to go guilty conscience. If you do something wrong, you feel guilty. Guilty conscience. Okay? Okay, now look at it. First one, now the purpose of the commandment is law from a pure heart, from a good conscience with from sincere faith. See the word good conscience here. If you see the word conscience in the New Testament, it's used several times in the New Testament. Most people don't even know it. We read it and we just we read it and we just pass it. We just pass it. Conscience, good conscience. What is good conscience? Now forget about it, let's move on. But that's the level to name. Go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13 verse, verse 18. Hebrews 13 18. Look at it. Pray for us, for we are confident that we have, we have a good conscience in all things designed to live honorably. Why is Paul talking about this conscience like this? You see, he's talking about conscience, 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 conscience everywhere. Why? Why is it so important to maintain good conscience? 
Praise God. Hallelujah. This is breaking news. Hallelujah. Breaking news. Hallelujah. Talk up. Talk up. Talk up. Talk up. Praise God. <laughs> we are invading a poor district right now. Eagle Christian Center and Eagle uh, Bible School is invading Apple. So if you live in that axis, guess what? Good news. Amen. Good news. You don't have to travel long distance right now. Hear me now. Just opposite the town hall. If you know Apple, 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 resentment, resentment, if you know town hall, opposite town hall, we have got a Bible school and a, and a flourishing satellite ministry taking place that place. And we are inviting you to be part of that ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's been overseen by our brother here, Friday Enang, and, da- and his darling wife here, Praise Richard Enang. Praise God. You see, listen, because, listen, I, when I began this message, I told you, I said, it is your, it is your ability to train your conscience that will affect your marriage. It's going to affect your, 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 your health. It's going to affect the, your children. It's going to affect your finances. It's going to affect how long you live on here on earth. We are looking at this today now. We are looking at how to maintain that blameless pure conscience. How can I maintain a pure conscience? How do I do it? I want to listen very well. So that we are looking at it now. We examine, we're going to dig in deeper and say, how do I maintain good conscience? How can I do it? Yes, good conscience. See good conscience now. Let's see another type of conscience. Now. Verse 1 chapter 8. Verse 1 8, verse 7 to 10. Look at it. However, there is not in, every, every, not in everyone that, that knowledge for some with, with consciousness of the idol. Until now eat it as a thing offered to an idol. And their conscience being weak is defiled. When your conscience is weak, I'll tell you what it means to have a weak conscience now. When your conscience is weak, somebody is, can have a weak conscience. It's supposed to have a conscience that is weak. And that weak conscience can be defied. But I'm going to explain that. I will explain that to you now. Let's go to the next, next verse. Go to the next verse. You see the explanation here now. But, but food does not commend us to God. For neither if we eat, are we, are we the better? Nor if we do not eat, are we the worse? But beware lest someone, somehow, this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak. People with weak conscience. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in idol's temple, will not the conscience of him who is weak be emboldened to eat those things over to idols? I don't know that you understand what it means. What it means of weak conscience? A weak conscience is not that this conscience is bad, but it's not strong. A weak conscience is somebody who looks at a pastor. A pastor commits sexual immorality. Mm-hmm. Pastor commits sexual immorality. Hey, what did I do? Make a good commitment myself. He doesn't have strength. His the conscience is weak. Okay? He goes to a church where, you know, uh, people, uh, born again believers, some of them are mature born again believers, they come to a church and then they, you know, they wear, uh, what is it called? Half, the uh, breast is half open and then half open and everything. And then so they come to church and so he's a young believer, just come to church. And he, when he comes to church, he read the Bible, he says, oh, you know, he wants to be well dressed. You know, Father, I want to dress to please you. And dress to please. then he gives church and saw that people opening their breasts. Mm. Tell her, cut her. You see, it's against, you see, the, see the, what happens is this. The, his conscience is already overridden because he's weak. But somebody with a strong conscience, good, strong conscience comes in. For instance, like my wife comes in, and then he comes in there, he's supposed everybody's where is there, uh, half, half naked. He doesn't bother him, he still maintains his good dress. He has strong conscience. He said, say, as a born again believer, don't use your liberty because you are a free person and then wound somebody's conscience. Because they are weak. There are people who are like babies, baby Christians. They don't have their conscience has not been developed yet, so they can easily fall for anything. There are people who come to church and, and then they just when they if the uh, if the pastor is uh, is uh, uh, if the pastor does air court like this put the air court here they, they all do the air court like that put the air court like that. The thing is this and that one is okay as long as it's not sin. But the, when you begin to do things that will begin to 
so to you is not sin. To them is sin. Because it's viol- anything that violates your conscience is sin. And if, if you are weak, many, many things can violate. Because you are weak, your conscience is weak. You don't know, cannot define, define between good and bad. That's why I see, that's why sometimes when you go, when you go to preach, eh? when you go to preach, you go and preach to somebody, and the person says, ah, you are preaching to me. Why you can't wear this clothes? Me and my wife, we, are going to pre- we go to preach to pre- pre- the churches. Eh? And everybody in the church, they tie head. Eh? We bring our hair tie and we bandage the head. <laughs> you got to say that? She will bandage, my wife will bandage her head. Wait, wait. Because it will wound their conscience. We know that we have liberty as born again believer. You don't have to tie your head. God does not listen to your prayer whether your head is tied or not tied. But these people don't know yet. So they say, he didn't cover her head. He didn't cover her head. So you know not to wound their con- weak conscience, you cover your head. Preach sure they can listen to you. They will not, even though they will not hear you at all. Is that it? Hmm. This woman go go hello. You know, cover her head. The conscience is weak. It's not strong. But there are even worse ones that are conscious that are already defiled and dirty. When conscience is defiled and dirty, you, are, you keep overriding, overriding the conscience, and then your conscience becomes seared. Look at it. Look at Timothy. Second verse chapter 1, verse 3. We in the body of Christ need teaching. Because it's lack of teaching that is actually troubling the church now. Is the biggest trouble of the church now is lack of teaching. Hmm? Second Timothy. I thank God whom I saw with a pure conscience. Conscience is pure. Look at it. As my fathers do, as without ceasing, I remember you in you in my prayers all in my prayers night and day. Now look at the pure conscience now. Go to Titus 115. To the pure, all things are pure. Huh? But to those who are defiled eh, and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but even their mind and conscience are defiled. That, uh, that was 115. Okay? Did, did you see that? Their mind and conscience are defiled. It's important to maintain a clear conscience. You cannot walk with God. If you don't maintain clear conscience, you can you can be his child and born again and go to heaven. But you are going to go to hell here, and your life can be cut short because you don't know how to maintain clear conscience. You don't know how much we have invested in wrong businesses, wrong businesses because we couldn't listen to our conscience. You don't know how how many of us have taken far-reaching decisions to go into different relationship with people because we, we, our conscience was never trained. If you're going to hear him, you need to do like Pete Paul. Do everything to maintain clear conscience. See, people, instead of teaching this, I'm preaching again, we won. Preach, uh, don't put on, we won. You're not put on, we won. You're not wear trousers. You're not wear the, Those are not issues, church. What is important is just like Paul said, I'm doing everything to maintain clear conscience, a conscience devoid of forfeits, those man and God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what we can take in the nature of ego, Christian voice of, of victory. victory. Hallelujah. Amen. You can, your conscience, if you are not born again, you have a dead conscience. Mm. Your conscience is dead to God. Mm. You can get your conscience revived right now. If you if you if you just make up your mind that you want to get born again, it's simple. Because as long as you're not born again, you are dead to things of God. You may be religious, you may pray, religious person, but you only go to hell as a religious person. So the way to do it is to simply put your faith in Jesus Christ. How? The person say, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I call on you. I call on you. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Jesus. 
Jesus is the son of God. He is the son of God. That died for my sins. That died for my sins. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Now. Right now. I believe. I believe. I receive. I receive. Jesus. Jesus. The son of God. The son of God. Into my life now. Into my life. Now. I forsake religion. I forsake religion. Religion is a lie. Religion is a lie. I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. The son of God. The son of God. I'm born again. I am born again. In Jesus name. Jesus. Now you said that simple prayer, you meant it. You are born again. Amen. It's as simple as that. Amen. You are born again. A brand new being. Brand new being. Brand new being. You have a brand new being now. Now you have a tender conscience. Mm. Your conscience is tender and clear. You can receive of the Holy Ghost. You can hear him clearly now because now you are a child of God with a very tender conscience. Praise God. So your, the future of your conscience is based on the, where you worship. You need to look for a living church where you can grow spiritually, where your conscience will be nurtured, where you, where you can hear the voice of your spirit clearly. So pray and look for a living church where you can grow now that you're a child of God. Okay? The next thing is that if you are sick in your body, and even if you are not born again, and you are sick in your body right now, we are here on account of what Jesus did so that you can stretch his love and mercy towards you to get born again. If you are sick in your body, touch how you are sick in your body. And let's just remove that sickness of your body right now. Sickness. Amen. Disease. Amen. Be gone. That's right. In Jesus' name. It's as simple as that. Amen. The, the, at the name. Every knee bows. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows. So that sickness in your body bows to the name of Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. Amen. Now, if you believe you receive, start doing what you couldn't do before. Stretch first your arms. If you couldn't eat, then my wife say, get yourself something to eat. <laughs> Take some part of the arm. You know, it shows that you have to act your feet. Praise God. By getting off of your bed. Get out of your bed. Get out of your bed. And begin to, begin to walk. Begin to walk. Praise God. Hallelujah. We love you. Jesus loves you. Join Pastor and Mrs. Luto at the Hebrew Christian Center for Sunday worship service by 9 a.m. Tuesdays, Bible studies and leadership training by 6 p.m. Fridays, prayer and healing service also by 6 p.m. Then we sit A14 Ground Floor, Rochester Plaza by Loki Christian Bookshop, with Season 3, Abuja. For further details, call 0803-965-8883 or email Hebrew Christian Center at yahoo.com. Make it a date with the Lord and experience God's transformation power in your life. You will never be the same. Look what you've done for me Your blood has set me free Jesus my Lord Look what you've done for me